If you're new here, one of the rules for shopping is that your spirit needs to be moved. Like if your whole body and spirit doesn't tell you you need an item, we don't buy it. So we love to buy things that our spirit tells us to buy. <laughs> and unfortunately for me, my spirit tells me to buy a lot. <laughs> stars what's up welcome back to the channel um, welcome to a new video this video is going to be fun because I am sharing my 2023 fall winter luxury wish list and about 10 items I will not be buying this season so I've been doing a little like short videos like this on Instagram and it's been doing phenomenally well and I did get some feedback that you know Y'all want some long form <laughs> about some of the things that I will not be buying and some of my reasoning behind it. So I figured, you know what, let's focus on some of the things I'm coveting, the items that are on my wish list that I absolutely love. And I feel like if you want to buy these items, 100%. And then of course, we gotta share the things that I will not touch and I will share why. And these are all my opinions. No jabs at anybody. Someone legit was like, oh, this person, this person has the things on your list. And I'm just like, these are just things I personally don't want to buy. And I have reasons for all of that. And these are the conversations that I have with my fashion girlfriends. And, you know, um, one just suggested, why not share this with your audience? So I started suggesting, and it's been very, very, very well received. So I figured, you know what? You guys are my people. You are my true all-stars here on YouTube. So I figured I'll do it with you guys here as well. So I'm going to share about, uh, I think there's about 12 or 14 items that I'm coveting, that I love, that I want. Um, some I probably just won't buy with price points, and those are the things that I will not be buying. Some are just, I, a, lot, a lot of the things that I don't want to buy usually have to do with the price. So sometimes there are things that I love. Sometimes there are things that I think are nice, but I think they're just way overpriced. And there's some things that I just feel like are not figure flattering or they're not artsy enough for me to kind of make that plunge. So yes, this is gonna be a fun video. I'm excited because I feel like I haven't done a video like this with you guys in a minute. So I'm very excited about the video. Um, before we jump into that, let's just get into my glasses real quick because I know someone's gonna ask. These are the glasses I wear all the time. They're my prescription glasses. I'm wearing them so I can actually see you guys. I'm in the viewfinder to make sure that I look legit. Um, and they're Jacques Marimage. The brand makes maybe like 200 of each silhouette. So I know these are not available. Um, my turtleneck is from Tabats. The red cashmere is J. Crew. Oversized blazer was thrifted. My girl Layla thrifted it for me because I just haven't, you know, I, I think I'm just... Because someone else was like, you know, I, they want me to go thrifting with them. And I've never really, I've done it. And I feel like I'm that person that when I'm shopping, I love to glance. And I feel like when, in, and maybe this is just me. And you guys let me know. Maybe this is just my wrong vision of what, or, or what luxury thrifting is like now. Because I remember when I was younger going to like thrift shops and there was just, there was stuff everywhere. And that was a huge turn off for me. I don't like shopping and clutter if that makes sense. Like, I won't even really shop in store because I just feel like there's so much. But yeah, if you guys have good pointers, let me know. Um, but yes, enough of the rambling. Let's get into the video. But if you're new, if I didn't say this already, I think I didn't. But if I didn't say this already, welcome. I'm Monica and I'm a fashion and lifestyle blogger based out of Atlanta. And if you love fashion, fashion and more fashion, just go ahead and subscribe, hit that notification bell. That way you never miss a video. In addition to doing fashion videos, high low fashion, because we love a good deal regardless. Um, I do do a lot of travel content, a little bit of the family, um, my kids and the husband and all that good stuff. So basically, if you love my vibe, just go ahead and subscribe. And if you guys have been rocking with me this long subscribe <laughs> okay let's get into this video because I can't wait to share the things I'm coveting you guys have to let me know if there's if there are items on this list that you're also coveting and if I should go ahead and take you know and just do it so yes it's gonna be a fun conversation afterwards so make sure you're commenting 
make sure you're commenting because I want to know what you guys think of this list afterwards. All right, let's get into it. Okay, so the first item. <laughs> so if you watched my shopping vlog, I bring you guys luxury shopping with me. I used to do a lot of the come shop with me vlogs when I started YouTube about two years ago. Um, and I did a lot of those and you guys loved it. And for some reason I just kind of stopped. And then also we are in a recession. So I was just like, yeah, definitely not shopping as much as I was shopping last year or the year before. So I was like, okay, I haven't done a lot of that, but I really wanted to kind of bring it back, especially because there was the new Fendi store that was opened at Phipps. So I brought, I brought you guys with me. So you would know that the first thing on this list, cause I didn't pick up this jacket um, on um, the shopping trip. They have it on hold for me, <laughs> but I'm just like, I, I don't know. I, I'm still kind of torn. I might just do it and you guys let me know, but this beautiful, let me move to the side so they can pop the images in. This gorgeous black double knit or double stitched um, Fendi wool coat with fur pockets. The fur pockets are mink with the Fendi logo and I'm obsessed with it. When I threw it on my body, I felt like I have arrived, darling. Like no one could tell me nothing. Um, I love it. The, the details, the slit, um, the slits on the sleeves, the slits on the side of the jacket. It's not too heavy, so it would travel well. And because it doesn't get too cold in Atlanta, it's perfect for Atlanta weather. So this is definitely number one on my luxury wish list. And I might just take the plunge. I know a lot of people suggested from watching that video to get the gray coat, but um, I feel like I have coats like the gray one, and I have nothing like that black one. So we'll see. But let me know. I would love to like. I would love to know if you guys think I should just do it and spend that six thousand two hundred dollars on that coat. So that's the number one thing, the Fendi coat. Let me know what you think. All right, on to the next. Okay, so the number two item on my wish list is a Hermes Birkin 30. I know, I know. For those of you guys that have been following me and rocking with me, yes, I am a Kelly girl. I love my Kelly, it's up there somewhere. I am a Kelly girl, but I've started, I've, I've gotten into this, I'm gonna use big bags again. And I have been using my bigger bags. Half the time they're empty, but I just love that vibe. Not too big, not too small, but functional good bags where if I just wanna throw a whole bunch of crap in there, I'm good. But at the same time, I also want it for a good travel bag. Um, I usually just only travel with my Dior book tote. And I have so many other totes, but I always gravitate towards the Dior book tote. But recently I've just been picturing myself with a beautiful white button down and a beautiful Birkin 30 in either Togo leather or Epson leather. Um, I would even do black. I've said I don't want any more black bags, but I would do black. I would do a gray. I know I would want a dark color. So color has never really been an issue for me. I just want something that's a very dark hue in a textured leather. So that's why I picked the, either the Togo leather or the Epson leather because I feel like, not that I feel, I know they have more longevity. And in my opinion, bags or leather with some kind of detail or grain or finish to them um, just look better and they do last longer. So that's why I want one of those now. Um, yeah. I, I'm, I'm like really want one of those, but I didn't do a lot of Hermes shopping this year because I felt like I bought so much last year and there was really nothing that, every time I went into the store, nothing moved my spirit. If you're new here, one of the rules for shopping is that your spirit needs to be moved. Like if your whole body and spirit doesn't tell you you need an item, we don't buy it. So we love to buy things that our spirit tells us to buy. <laughs> and unfortunately for me, my spirit tells me to buy a lot, <laughs> but um, I'm trying to be good this year, but yes. So number two is the Birkin, Hermes Birkin 30 in either Epson leather or Togo leather. All right, so the second thing on my list is this beautiful Saint Laurent leather crop jacket. I've seen a lot of girls rocking this jacket and I'm obsessed with it. Um, I'm not obsessed with the price tag. That's why it's a wish 
and not an actual purchase. Because normally, if you guys have been rocking with me, you probably have noticed this. Once I love something, I really don't wait. I just buy it. But, you know, I do have budgets. <laughs> and that, sev I think it's $7,500. The price tag on it's just a lot. And I do feel like I can get similar looks. Um, but I definitely want this jacket. I just feel like... It is such a great cut in terms of the silhouette. The shoulders are very boxy and almost have, they have more of a masculine vibe, which I think is absolutely stunning. The leather, stunning. Um, there's just everything about it that I'm obsessed with and that's why it's like way up there on my wish list. I, I love the jacket. I don't think it'll ever go on sale, <laughs> unfortunately. But um, I don't know, maybe, maybe if, I don't know. I don't know. I really, really love it. But yeah, it's, it's there. I, I really love it. On to the next. Okay, so the next item is this beautiful cost jacket that I found on cost.com. So <laughs> I saw this coat and it's cost. Cost is not like terribly expensive. Um, they usually have very well reasonable price items that are very well made. So cost is like a go-to for me. Um, so I saw this coat and for some reason, I think the denial in me saw $169. So I was just like, oh my God, I have to get this coat. Um, and it's beautiful black long overcoat with leather tassels just running through the jacket. And I was just like, this is insane. And then I was just like, how in God's name is cost selling this jacket for $169? Most of the sizes were gone already. So I was just like, I don't care what size it is. I'll get it altered. And then when I added it to cart, it was, a, it was 16, basically it was $1,700. So I don't know how I admitted a zero. And so I was just like, yeah. It, and the price is still good, but I don't know, it's cost. So I don't expect to pay that much at cost. So yeah, I kind of walked away from it, but it's definitely on my wish list. I'm gonna keep an eye open on the website in case they restock the coat because it is absolutely, absolutely stunning. It's, it's just beautiful. Um, I was in the store and it wasn't there either, but I was just like, I feel like I need this. I need to find it. I don't need any black coats. I've got so many black coats, but I would make the exception for that coat, even at 1700, if it comes back in my size. Because it's not, because it's not inexpensive, I won't buy a bigger size and get it tailored, but if they bring it back in my size, I will definitely get it. On to the next. Okay, so this next item, I, I did a, a video on Instagram kind of predicting some of the items that are going to sell out for fall 2023. And this bag, this Gucci bag was on the list. So this bag is from the Tom Ford era, which in my opinion, best era out of all the Gucci, you know, the Gucci stuff that I've seen over the years. And I can't remember if I had this bag. I don't think I bought this bag when it came out because I was shopping Gucci back in the day when Tom Ford was a creative director. If I didn't buy it, I think one of my sisters got it. Um, and I did, when I moved to Atlanta, I got rid of all my Gucci stuff, like all of it. Just because me, younger, was just one of those like fashion snobs, like, oh God, everybody, ha I'm, and I'm not that person anymore. I think when you work in luxury retail, you really get jaded and you drink that Kool-Aid. But now that I'm older and so much wiser, I'm just, I laugh at it. I, I see I see girls doing it and I was like, that used to be me, but I get it. But um, I would definitely get this bag. I, I It's stunning. It is absolutely stunning. I, I keep on looking at it. I saw it in New York. I was at the Gucci store where they were literally unpackaging the bag. Like it, ha it wasn't, it hadn't debuted yet. And they showed it to me and I was just like, why would you do this? And now I feel like I've kind of missed the boat because the prices have started to go up if I'm correct. And I'm one of those people that if I know that I could have gotten it for less, it just really hurts my heart to get it more expensive. But I don't know, it's still calling me. The, the red I love. Um, and the silver is just stunning as well. So they showed me the red and the silver. I kind of wanted the red in the medium size. I think it was the medium or the small size, but the silver was stunning as well. 
Um, but yeah, I don't know. I really, really love the bag. And my love for the bag is just becoming stronger. So it's definitely up there on my wish list. Let me know if you guys got the bag, if anybody got the bag, or let me know if you guys saw my reel on Instagram about how that bag would be a hit. And now I'm seeing it everywhere. I, I already knew. So this is one thing about me. And I think this is also because I've been in the luxury space for so long. I can always tell when a bag will have longevity. Same, and that's what I did with the Fendi first. I, I probably got the first drop of the Fendi first. I knew it was gonna do well. Told you guys about it. I have it in every silhouette. And there's, you know, there's so many other bags that I've purchased that I just know will have longevity. Um, same thing with uh, the Antigona when I got it, like what, 10 or something years ago. So, you know, I, I tend to, I can always spot a good bag and I know that Gucci Horsefit bag, even though, you know, it, it went on a hiatus, it came back, it's always gonna be a classic, especially because it was from the Tom Ford era. So if you guys are contemplating on getting that bag, I would highly suggest to, uh, to get it. Two thumbs all the way up. The price will probably just go up from here. Um, and of course, I will link everything that I mentioned in the description box. I know the Hermes stuff is probably only on pre-loved, pre but I will link anything that I can find links for online for you guys to make your shopping easier because we, we make life easier for you guys. Anywho, love the Gucci horse bit. Love, love, love. Obsessed with it, actually. I won't lie. I'm obsessed with it. Yeah, I'm, look, I'm just looking because I have the picture of it there. I'm just like, oh, it's so beautiful. Anywho, on to the next. Okay, so for the next item, I have the Kate cardigan on the list. But I'm just like, do I really want to spend that much um, on the cardigan? Especially, just like I said, the evolution of the price is just outrageous to me. And there's so many brands that are making similar. So I'm like, I don't know if I even want that on my wish list. Maybe if I find it on sale, I highly doubt I will. But I still love the cardigans. They're absolutely beautiful. I love how thick they are. Um, they fit like a glove. They're just excellent. And for me, I'm a cardigan type of girly. I wear them all year round. So I know I will get my cost per wear, but I think they're almost like $1,700 now. So I'm just like, <laughs> yes, I know supply and demand, blah, 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 but it's really not that serious. There's just no reason why it should be that expensive. But anyway, it's still on my wish list. It's still on my wish list. I'm not going to write it off. And it's not on the what I will not be buying list because I still feel like I want one. Let me know if you guys have one and how much you love it. And if you think I should just do it, I would love to know. On to the next. Okay, so when I was minding my business on net forte shopping, <gasps> oh, wait you guys see, I just got a pair of sneakers on net forte that are stunning. I know this is off topic. Sorry, if you're new here, I have the tendency to go off tang on tangents every now and then, especially when something comes to mind. And those sneakers that I found, actually let me pop a picture of them up first so you can see. These Nikes are everything. And I've been creating a lot of just like very fun everyday looks featuring the Nikes that I have, which I went from like zero to 60 because I didn't realize how inexpensive they were in comparison to my designer sneakers. My son wanted a pair, so I took him to the store and come to find out they're a hundred and something dollars. I bought my first pair of um, Jordans for like almost $500 on, I think, Farfetch. So I just assumed that that's how much they cost only to find out that no, <laughs> that's not. So I've been stocking up on them. Every time I find a color I don't have, I buy them. So I've been creating a lot of outfits around them and you guys are loving them because I don't know who buys what, but I always get to see when people use my links to shop. That's why we encourage you guys to use our links. So I'm always grateful when you guys do use um, my links. Sorry, the, my kids were like sending a message, but uh, yeah, yay, sorry, I apologize. That's the kids letting me know they're on the bus. Yay, anywho. Um, but yes, those Nikes, I will link them. I, I noticed they were sold out in a lot of different places, but if they are available, I will link them, but they will look amazing with this outfit. I don't, I, that was me going off on a tangent. Anywho, yes, I was shopping around looking for, just looking at stuff in general, picked up the Nikes and some other holiday pieces that I'll probably share with you guys later on. And then I saw this bag from Bottega. She's gorgeous. This is a new silhouette. I don't know, if, I, I'm assuming this is a new silhouette because I've never seen this silhouette before. It's called the Gamile. I hope I said that right. Sorry, Italian, it's not <laughs> my, my, my father's language. Uh, I was having this conversation with a girlfriend and I, we were talking about some of these bags and some of the stuff that I found because she's a fashion girly too. And I was just like, can you pronounce? She's like, mm -mm, that's not my father's language. And I'm like, you're right. Cause I'm like, then I'm, cause I'm like every now and then 
some of you guys will get into the comment section and start correcting and I'm just like, I'm not a French speaking person, I'm African. And half of y'all don't take the time to learn how to pronounce African names, so not that I wanna be disrespectful to anyone's language, but put that same energy when it comes into pronouncing my name. Mind you, Monica is my confirmation name, but Oluwafumilaya is my Nigerian name. And if you can pronounce that right, then you can correct me on any other language. But if you can't, then don't bother. Anywho, the bag is stunning. She's gorgeous, off-white, beautiful, intertecto leather. Ooh, the finish. It's, uh, it's, it's price, no, honestly, I think it's a reasonable price for Bottega and anything in that finish, um, in that intertecto, that's that green one back there. I think that was about, no, I think this one was about six. So that one is not, I think four nine is, is, is pretty decent. Um, in terms of the luxury space. I just think it's an absolutely stunning bag. Um, if you're new here and you're like, a lot of the things on this list are bags, I'm a bag girly, so bags will always be my number one. So yes, that is a bag that I just saw that I now discovered that I need. I never knew I needed it until I saw it, but my spirit was moved. So yeah, I think I need it. It's on my wish list. It's on my wish list. Okay, next item, the Dior saddle bag. Because I sold, I sold my, my saddle bag, um, I think maybe a year or two ago. I think I just got tired of it. But I knew I wanted another saddle bag because I waited so long to get that saddle bag. I had the saddle bag the first run, and then obviously they, you know, they took it out, and I knew it was coming for like five years. It was in the making for so long. Um, and so when it finally came out, I just grabbed whatever was left. <laughs> I just grabbed the idea. I was like, oh, navy, small. I can't fit anything inside. It's fine. Just give it to me. Um, so I did sell that one. I bought so many straps for it as well, which I'm selling some of the straps. I'm looking at my box of bags I'm going to sell. But, um, yeah, I, I was walking through the store. They, they opened a new Dior store in Atlanta, and I saw the saddle bag on display, and I was just like, there she is. That's my replacement. It's in crinkled lambskin leather, absolutely beautiful, with white pearls. I love bags that are interesting, that speak to me as an artist. If you don't know, or if you're new, I am an artist. But I just, those are the pieces that I like, and I just thought that, that this particular saddle bag was just so unique, so beautiful, would be a great addition to my collection. It is black, but because it has that pearl, those details, it just makes it a little bit more interesting. So yeah, I, I think, I don't know. Oh, sorry, there, is it pearls? Give me a second. I'm like, I'm reading. Oh yes, they are pearls, So, but they're not real pearls. They're not real pearls, and it's a $6,200 bag. Anywho, it's luxury. Um, but yeah, I, lo I love the bag. It's so beautiful. It, it's, st it's stunning. It has my heart. Um, after I get rid of all the bags that I need to get rid of, then I will add another bag. But then I have to, dis I have to figure out which one to prioritize because I want them all. I want everything. And yeah, the budget doesn't allow everything, so we wish. And that's why we add items to our wish list. The wish list business is new for me. Y'all know, like, I, I really am not a patient person when it comes to things I love, but yeah, I I'm gonna start making the wish list now, so this way I'm focused, and I only buy what's on the list, and if it's not there, we take it out. But yes, that Dior saddle bag, she's gorgeous. She's stunning, she's a moment. I love, on to the next. Okay, so the next item on my wish list is the Van Cleef Alhambra, mot um, sorry, five motif bracelet in white gold. Do you guys see this? Stunning. Like, I saw the bracelet and I was just like, stunning. I thought, well, I still want the yellow gold and the onyx and, bl and the black onyx. I think that one is absolutely beautiful. But then I saw this white gold option and I was just like, damn, she's gorgeous too. Cost a lot more, actually, it yeah, it, co it cost more than the yellow gold. Um, and I'm taking that, the detail of the plates of the motif, so, but she, it's gorgeous. Gorgeous. I don't know, I really, like when I saw it, my mouth dropped. And that's why it's on the wish list. She's beautiful. Let me know, which one would you guys do? Would you do the black, um, the black and yellow gold, or would you do the white gold? I'm curious. On to the next. Okay, so I love a great pair of sunglasses. And I was just, you know, looking around. 
<laughs> I'm always looking for sunglasses. And I've told myself I won't spend a lot of money on sunglasses anymore after I got my first pair from Amazon and they were amazing. But I keep on stumbling across designer pairs that I just think are stunning. And this Tom Ford pair, everything, like so good. And I love like that gold, you know, like detail hanging from it. I think it's just so cool. Um, I think it's a, so, uh, no, I was gonna say it's somewhat of a decent price point. <laughs> But I remember gone were the days where sunglasses used to be like all of them like expensive was like 500 and now everything is like over $500 so they're still expensive at I think they're 690 but they're so cool looking they look so good actually a friend of mine does have them and she said that they're hard to take off but I'm like as long as they look good when I'm wearing them and they don't hurt my um, temples or like the back of my ear then I'm fine. I'm like taking off, yeah, we can, I don't need to rush and take the glasses off. We can take our time. But yes, I do love this pair. I think they look absolutely stunning. Okay, so next we have this Gabrielle Hearst dress. Um, pretty pricey. That's why it's on the wish list. I think I will definitely wait for this dress to go on sale. It was like almost $4,000 if I'm correct. And I was just like, damn, very expensive. But I love the detail. I love the different colors in the pleats and I just think that it's such a beautiful dress. It would be great for any year really. Like it's something that would live in my closet forever. Um, so yeah, that's why I put this dress on my list. I don't have, I usually don't put a lot of clothes on my wish list just because I feel like with clothing, I can get cr great clothing anywhere. I'll wear anything. I'll wear stuff from Walmart, from anywhere and I'll make it look good. So for the most part, I feel like with clothing, um, it's always hit or miss with me. And and clothes tend to go on sale. They, they legit go on sale with every major retailer. It's usually the accessories that you will, you know, depending on what it is that won't go on sale or not. So with clothes, I'm always like, ah, you know, it doesn't need to be on the wish list. But now that I have this dress on my list, I'm gonna keep an eye open for it. So in case it goes on sale, I'm gonna grab it. Okay, so the next item is this beautiful Alaya heart bag. It is in um, metal, it's like a silver, it's a, a silver tone metal and it's stunning. It's absolutely beautiful. I know I don't need another heart bag because I've got, I've got this one from Chanel, but it's black and white. So having an all silver bag, I think would be genius. And I don't have an all silver bag. The closest thing I have is my Fendi sequins baguette that has the rose gold, gold and silver. But I would love to have just an all silver bag. And I feel like this Alaya bag would be my, that would be the one for me. I love it. I think it's absolutely stunning. Let me know what you guys think. It's funny because the all silver, the metal version is so much more expensive than the leather version. And I get it. It's, it's metal, but it's a huge price difference, but it's, it's still beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. And it's still under my, I like to give myself the $5,000 threshold for bags. The only exceptions are if it's a specialty bag or if it's anything in the Hermes family. But for the most part, I try to keep it at under 5,000. And this one is 3.8, so it's not terrible, but it's on the wish list. It's on the list. Okay, so the last item. I saw one of the Yusufs had this bag. She got it in a Milan. Hey, girls. Hey, guys. Oh, hey, sweeties. <laughs> because of them, I like, coined All Stars. They were the ones who were like, what, are, what do I call my subscribers or followers? So, but yes, um, when they were in Milan, they got that little Jackie, the micro Jackie bag. And I was just like, Normally, I, I'm not really that, I, I do get, I do get influenced from my other, like, friends and other influencers, but not all the time. Um, every now and then I see something and I'm just like, okay, I need that too. And not necessarily the black and white, I think it was black and silver, but it was just such a beautiful bag. I, it had, like, stones on, it was just stunning. Um, and I think I would, I would definitely add that to my, to my, to my collection. Maybe not in that color way, but I just, looking at the bag, I, I have been looking at it, the silhouette in general. I think Karen has it as well. K Karen Bitchick has it as well. And I, I think she had, I can't remember what color she had. And it comes with the longer strap. So I, I have been looking at the bigger size with the longer strap. Then I saw the small little bitty one. And y'all know I love a useless bag. I love a little bitty useless, it just looks pretty and I'm going to wear it anyways type of bag. And I was just like, that would be a really, really good addition to my collection. Don't know what color it is. I think I need to go into the Gucci store and, and look around or just go online and see what options are there. 
and determine, you know, what to get. But I just think it's such a beautiful bag. It's absolutely stunning. And it would look really good on my bag wall. Don't you guys agree? <laughs> let, me, let me know if you agree. <laughs> Okay, so that is it for the bags. Oh, sorry, not the bag. I know it sounds it more so sounded like the bags I'm coveting, but those are the items on my wish list as of now. I feel like the list always expands. I don't really have a lot of shoes on the list. I didn't find a lot of shoes that I loved. I'm finding this year's shoe options to be a little difficult. Um, the only pair of boots that I probably would have put on the list, I bought them already, and those are my Kate boots. I love these boots. I, I did a reel just highlighting how amazing these boots are and they are a winner. I've worn them to death. I almost feel like I need to get the black and ivory version. I have them in the ivory and the black. Oh, uh, so I have them in the ivory, yeah, ivory and the black with the snake skin. And now I feel like I need the black, like the reverse of them, just because I wear them all the time and I can wear them for hours. When I was in New York, because I got them at um, Burdoff's in New York, and someone who was there, she's just a client shopping, she was wearing a really cool outfit. So I, I'm that type of person. If I see you and you're dressed to the tees, I will compliment you. How you respond is up to you, but I will always compliment you. And I complimented her and she was really gracious. But um, she saw the boots and she's like, oh, she doesn't like them and I was just like mm, but I really like them so I'm so happy I went with them regardless because when I tell you the amount of compliments I get every time I wear them no matter where I am I get 101 different compliments so definitely one of my best purchases actually I will be doing my best and worst purchases for the year and I have I actually this year I have a few worse normally I don't have a lot of worse but this year I do have some that I wish I did not buy so stay tuned for that in December but yes now Let's get to the fun part. I'm going to share the items I will not be buying this season. <laughs> okay, so first up on my will not be buying list um, are the Gucci fur mules. Like, I did a reel on this as well. I think the reel comes out either, I think it comes out either the week this comes out or after. And I, I legit said, like, if they're not, if they weren't Gucci, I don't think anyone would look at them. Like, legit. Like, if Gucci didn't do these furry, ugly shoes, would we buy them? I don't think so. Because they're not flattering. They look really bad. <laughs> I don't know. I think the only fur shoes that I kind of like, love even, I, I wouldn't say love, but like, and I would have bought are the Gucci Princetons. Because the fur was at the back. This pair, the fur is in the front, so it just, I don't know. It looks like I'm wearing a cat. I, I just, I, I don't know. Every time I look at them, I, I tried, and, and, and I've seen people wear them, and they style them, and they look good. And that's the thing about, one thing about me, even if I don't like something, if I see someone do something justice, I will always give you your flowers, and I will always compliment you. But for me, I have big feet, number one. I wear a size 11 shoe. Can you imagine a size 11 foot wearing those shoes? Just picture it. I would look like I'm wearing a cat on my feet. So it's a no. It's an, I think that's like a no-brainer. <laughs> okay, on to the next. Okay, next are these Loewe boots. I don't think I need to say anything. I don't even... I, they look like... They look like shoes from, like, the Lord of the Rings or something. Like, I just... I'm not a fan. Like, I... There's some things that I just consider art and I will buy just for the artistic fact. But there are other things where I, and, and even back in the day when I used to work luxury, we would laugh about some of the things some of the brands would create. And we would say, we know this designer is sitting down on her sketch desk laughing as she's drawing this out and let's see how many people will buy this. Let's see how we can fool people to buy this even though we know it's not good. We used to do that a lot with Marnie. Mind you, I love Marnie, but there was just so many pieces every now and then that we were just like, this is beautiful and it's artistic, but with that price point and it's not flattering, like you know damn well, this is not flattering or good for anybody, but it was the job to sell it, so yeah. But anywho, these shoes from Loewe, these boots, it's a no for me. Thank you very much. Okay, so this item, also shared on Instagram, and I think I shared the shorts here, and it was a little controversial, but great, and this is one thing I love about my audience, 
um, here, really, and Instagram especially, because. I never want anyone to feel like, oh, I'm, I purchased that. And is she saying what I purchased is wrong? No, I am not the god of fashion at all. I like having dialogue around fashion. I like discussing the reasons why I don't like things and the reasons why I do love things. Um, so it was nice to have a post like that on Instagram where a lot of my friends, a lot of people I love and I admire their style, have these items and they disagree, but we have great conversation and it was such a great post. I'm gonna link the post in the description box so you guys can check it out. But um, this YSL hobo bag, I know a lot of people have the bag, a lot of people love the bag, but I just, I have tried to buy this bag legit three times. And I'm not kidding, but because I have a leather background and I used to be a leather specialist, I just couldn't bring myself to buy it every time. Um, the, and, and I'm going to share the reasons. And we have a long format. So with Instagram, I couldn't really go into detail. And I did a little bit more in, in some of the comments. But I, there's a, a few solid reasons. First of all, when the bag first of all debuted, it was around in the $3,000 price point. Now it's about $5,000. To me, that's a red flag. Um, and, I, and I know we like to say supply and demand. In this situation, I'm sorry, it's just, that's just not the case. There is a reason why St. Laurent bags are not as expensive as your Dior or your Chanel or whatnot. Yes, a lot of it has to do with the brand recognition, but also to the quality of leather used. Now, I'm not saying that St. Laurent does not use good leather, they do, but in comparison to that price point with other brands, the difference is clear. And if you are a leather specialist or if you worked with luxury pieces for a long time, if you were gonna be honest with yourself, you touch that skin and you look at it and you know that it's not, it almost looks, it looks like it would, it's pig skin, but it's lamb skin, right? And the finish on the leather is just, there's just something very off about it. Um, even my friends who, <laughs> even my friends who still work in luxury, um, and even the girls at St. Laurent, you know, cause they, they follow me and they're like, yeah, we saw the post. They're like, but we love what you talked about with the, with the, with the takeaway bag. Cause the takeaway bag is one of my favorite bags. Um, you know, so they didn't really, I could, you know, you can tell when somebody is kind of in agreement, but they can't agree with you. Um, but yes, that, the, the leather on it just, it looks borderline plasticky to me. So I, every time I'm like, okay, no, but you know, give it a try. I go back in, I look at it again, and I walk out because I'm just like, I can't get over the way the leather looks. It looks like it's pigskin. It looks like it's, it, it, that's what it looks like to me. It does not look like lambskin. And also too, lambskin is such a delicate skin that I don't think I would want a lambskin bag. Not that I don't think, I know. I, would, I don't want a lambskin bag for an everyday bag. So that's another reason why I had to walk away from it, even though I tried. And when they showed me the ivory version, I was like, a hell no. Um, the ivory version to me, and this is to me, definitely does not look up on par. It just doesn't look, there's something off about it. Something very off about it that I just can't get over. Um, and I have other YSL bags. I have a beautiful Cassandra bag that is stunning. It wears very well. It's croc embossed, um, but it's also not with that price point. So I feel like the price that you ask for a bag at 3000 yeah, maybe, but at 5000 it's an absolutely hell no for me. And then another thing, I did have a lot of people say that, you know, they have the bag, they love the bag, and the older it gets, it looks better. And that is one very true to leather, especially, well, certain leather. More so, I feel like with cow high and goat skin, the older it gets, it looks better. For me, my experience with lamb skin, depending on what it is, it can, it does have the tendency to look better with age. So a few people were like, the older their bag has gotten, they've actually appreciated it more. So if you still want to get the bag and you're like, you know what, Monica, I respect your opinion, but I love the bag, then get the bag because apparently it ages very well. Cause I've had, I had more than one person tell me that it ages very well. But for me, those are the reasons why I wouldn't get it. And then also I'm kind of addicted to my book toad. I have my, my Dior book toad is all leather. And I just find it to be such a great travel bag. And I know the only only thing, the only way I would use the Saint Laurent Hobo 
I can't remember the name of the bag. <laughs> it's gone. But the only way I would use the bag would be for travel. So it just doesn't make sense for me to, especially when I have all those boxes that I don't like about it. That would be me forcing it upon myself. So that's, that's why that bag is a no for me. Okay, the next item I will not be getting this season, the Kate Marcy Flats. I think they speak for themselves. They're, they're not cute and they have a very hefty price point to go with it. I, I just feel like for a thousand dollars, I can get a great pair of loafers. I can get a really good substantial pair of heels that will probably last a lot longer. I say if you love this look, get the mango option. Mango has a great, would we call this a dupe or inspired, I guess, by the silhouette for less than $200. So I definitely would not get to the Kate pair. Even though I love Kate, I love everything about Kate right now. I just love what they're doing. But that shoe, a hundred percent no for me. There was another pair of shoes that they had on their website that I was just like, ooh, these are really, really, really ugly. But that particular pair, absolutely not now. Miss me with that at what, 950? Mm -mm, mm, no. Next on the list, the Bottega drop earrings. I'm not saying the dupes, <laughs> but the actual Bottega pair. Um, <laughs> They're just not iconic enough. I, 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 I share that, that pair on Instagram as well. And they're just the silhouettes. They're not real gold. There's just nothing about them that would make me want to pay, what, they're like $1,300 or $1,500. There's just nothing to them like to pay that much for a pair of earrings that are costume jewelry. That's it. <laughs> okay, this one. Another piece that I've seen girls rock this, and I admire it on them, the way they put it together, but I just, I, it's just too much. And that's the Jean-Paul Gaultier dot dress. It's a lot, it's, it's, it's a lot for me. I just feel like it's not figure flattering. It doesn't complement the female silhouette. Uh, maybe has a top, but the whole has a dress. I just think it's just, it's, it's a lot. It's, it's a lot. Okay, so the last two items. Um, are both from Phoebe Philo's new collection. I was chatting with one of my fashion friends and she was telling me about this new drop because I did not know. I wasn't paying attention to what Phoebe Philo had done or, you know, I know I knew she was coming out with her own line, but I didn't realize it had dropped. Um, so she was like, yes, have a look and let me know what you think. So I was perusing around the website and I was just like, kind of like rubbing my eyes <laughs> or rubbing my glasses. Am I, am I seeing correctly? Um, the line is, it's pretty nice. It's a decent line. It's definitely giving me very much Kate, the row. However, the prices are ridiculous. It's as simple as that. Absolutely ridiculous. I have, I've there, so I start, well, not I started, but I opened, um, the Reed Krakoff Boutique in Atlanta. And I also closed it because the store, the brand went bankrupt. And there's a reason why fashion brands disappear. When you overprice goods, um, you will eventually have to either decrease your prices or you will leave the market. And even though Phoebe, Ph Phoebe Philo did an amazing job with Celine, has a new brand on her own to request the likes of $5,200 for, was it 52? I think it was even more. There was actually a bag. I'll insert the picture of the bag that I saw. Just a classic clean tote. No logos, nothing, but for $8,200. And I'm like, that's really, really, really reaching. Would you buy this bag for $8,200 even if it was Chanel or anybody else? But Talkless has a new brand. I'm like, how, how does your brand survive if you want to become a mass produced brand, like some of the brands you've worked with, unless she intends to keep it very small, I just don't see any kind of longevity for, for her brand with these type of prices. So these pants, they're an embroidered tailored pant and they look very cool, but with that price point, it's a no, absolutely not. Like insanity to me. 
And then I came across these glasses because I was perusing around the website and I was just like, there's nothing that really, to me, was warrants the, the price points, basically. So I guess the whole brand is a no for me. Um, but these particular sunglasses, because y'all know, I will splurge on a pair of sunglasses. So I came across a pair of glasses. They are the Bombay, I think, the Bombay um, Acetane um, sunglasses. Um, <laughs> they're $750. But then I looked at them, I'm just like, well, they look like my Dior sunglasses that cost me less than 500 or maybe they were a little more. But, but still, it's the house of Dior. And I don't know. And, and not, to, not to say that, you know, she doesn't deserve, the, you know, to have to come or, or to debut with, great, with a higher price point. I'm sure she does, but it's still luxury. And unless she's going to some other place or planet getting different materials... None of these materials <laughs> cost this much. So, yeah, the whole brand right now is a no for me. Let me know if you guys are digging the Phoebe Philo drop, if you guys are going to splurge, if you would pay the $750 for those sunglasses. I'm very curious. I want to know if I'm on an island with this or if we are all in agreement that these price points are ridiculous and we will not be buying this collection for fall, winter 2023. All right, guys, there you have it. Those are the items I will not be buying for fall fall winter 2023 and the items that are on my wish list for fall winter 2023 the holidays are right around the corner so um yeah I'm gonna be sharing this video with my husband my, my friends and my family so y'all know what to buy for me but let me know if anything on my wish list caught your attention if if those items are on your wish list let me know if you are in agreement with um the items I will not be buying or if you're loving some of the items I will not be buying and you don't agree I love having great dialogue with you guys because we keep it, we keep it cute. We keep it friendly. Like it's just, it's a conversation. It's not an attack on anybody. It's just our opinions and our love for fashion. And in our love for fashion, we don't always have to agree. We can always agree to disagree. So I would love to get that conversation going with you all. Thank you so much for watching my videos, guys. If you are not following me on Instagram and TikTok, you guys are missing out because I'm posting so much great content on both platforms. It's just an easier lift. So it's easier for me to just take whatever random content and just throw it there. Um, um, so make sure you check it out, especially Instagram, because everything on Instagram is very intentional. TikTok is where I get to have so much fun because it doesn't have to be perfect, and I love that. So check me out. It's Odd My Money on both platforms. Check out my website, oddmymonica.com. Also, guys, make sure you are following me on the LTK app for shopping links for everything, legit everything. So what you see on my social media posts, on my YouTube shorts. I have links for everything on the LTK app, especially because um, I think YouTube is not allowing links in the descriptions now for shorts, so I have everything there. I will link my LTK app in the description box of this video as well. Um, what else, what else? I think that's it, I cannot remember. Oh, I know somebody's gonna ask about this necklace. I think it's old from Tabbas. So yeah, I don't think it's available, but I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Love you. Bye, all-stars.